final part of the baking and uh, what I did here was I skipped a few frames um, quite a few uh, I baked most of the the crap surrounding the engines the exhaust and everything it wasn't too hard uh, nothing you haven't seen uh, in videos before so what I'm doing here is I just duplicated that little link there which I talked about in the previous video so that is complete now and uh, I'm gonna continue fixing a little bit of the normal map we baked before this so big problem there actually um, I get this weird stretched um, effect down there and I'm going to fix that by moving uh, some pol some uh, pixels around in the actual normal map itself uh, this is some something that can be quite handy and you can tell the areas that have a bit of problems by uh, how bright the colors are there uh, you can see those are really really bright greenish yellow sort of tint and that means that um, there's some extreme normal map correction happening on that location and it's uh, it's better um, to fix that because well obviously it's just a cage problem instead of fixing the cage I'm fixing the actual normal map so that looks better I might want to lower it a little bit since they still seem high you can obviously tell they're a little bit fake so how am I going to do that? I'm just going to select these uh, that stick out and scale them down a lot. Nothing too hard. Uh, move, scale, there we go. Save this. Or oh, well, I might want to do a little bit of correcting first. Yeah, just to fix that area, make sure there's nothing uh, left over because if you look really closely to this video it's not so visible in this compressed video you can tell that there's a slight color difference um, between the area below that um, little corrected part and the standard areas so I just fixed that up so just a little bit more fixing I need to do here you have to be careful with normal maps. What might seem, uh, what is visibly, what is not visible, might cause visible problems when it's eventually applied to the model. Uh, so let's see. I'm saving this again, and yeah, that's actually looking better. Yep, it's a whole lot better. Okay. So, some more things I can fix here. Um, all the carbs, not all that much, I think. Oh, we, we do have a bit of a problem um, over here. Something something strange going on here. Um, this specific. Also, you can see smoothing group problems. What I did there is I didn't split the um, the the UVs for what the smoothing groups are uh, expecting. And I'm thinking if I if I should fix this manually, but it might be a little bit tricky. Um, let's see, the best thing to do is probably select some polygons over here and use that to just duplicate that part over there. Erase what I don't need, like that. Yeah, and then stretch that part. There we go. It looks like uh, I should correct it. I'm just going to duplicate it over to the other parts. And a final time. And I'm just stretching it out like so. All right, let's save and see what this does. It's not fixing the problem. Uh, apparently, something strange is going on with the mesh there. Um, so I'm just going to check out what the problem is. First, uh, first thing I'm thinking is is um, these two polygons are trying to smooth into each other. There's something something strange going on there. Um, checking all the surrounding smoothing groups, but it appears that they're all okay. Um, I don't see a problem here. And then if I look at triangulation, that's actually what seems to be causing this um, 
So if I flip my triangulation around, it tends to get better. So try to look closely here. Um, the problem is that the triangulation was all coming out of one single point, and uh, that was giving giving some some pretty bad problems. Uh, so the best thing to do is try to triangulate an end gun like this evenly. You might not expect this to happen, but apparently it's the first time I get this too. Uh, it, it can make a difference for uh, for even on flat surfaces. So anyway, that one's fixed too. I'm especially showing this in the video because I think it's interesting. If you ever encounter this sort of problem, so you know what to do. And apparently, uh, <laughs> for our, some reason, my uh, my UVs got screwed up again. I think uh, that little relax I did on there uh, got reset because I changed the pulling on under the unwrap. That was just me being a little bit uncareful. Um, I just had to collapse that UV to prevent that. Not a big problem. A bit of a, a dent at the bottom there, but I don't know if that's so important. Might be troublesome to fix. Oh, and uh, I forgot a few parts here. Uh, I'm still gonna bake those, and I'm just hiding what I don't need. All right, so this is just the radiator, a really simple part. Uh, I don't think it deserves a lot of my attention. Just creating a simple beveled edge version of it. It's mostly there just because of silhouette. I want, uh, I don't want the the grill to be completely see through. Uh, so you can just see the, the engine belt behind it. it. Has to be interesting. Okay. There we go. And I need to add some connects here just so it doesn't smooth too much. And that's acceptable. I mean, <laughs> radiator could have more detail, but this thing is probably going to be mostly black on the diffuse so I don't think it's worth putting more effort in there same for the uh, the radiator hose not too much effort just gonna smooth it and bake that I'm hiding all the stuff that I've baked before I didn't show you the these things but they're fairly simple I don't think they were worth uh, worth showing um, the the full engine block was much harder and uh, it showed a lot of problems yeah, I decide to unhide them anyway because they're not named correctly. I'm not really sure what I'm doing here. Um, it's a while since I recorded this video. Yeah, there we go. Probably just some naming that I had to fix. Okay, so uh, one of the parts I didn't bake yet is that little front of the engine part. This one. So gotta get to that. I gotta detach that object since I baked those before. Attach these together. Move that more uh, more inside because yeah, it's gonna influence baking anyway. Okay. Those need to be moved a little bit too. And what I'm doing here is I'm gonna scale those bolts also, just so it becomes a little bit easier to work with when baking. As I said, height doesn't matter here. Uh, it's just the the relative angle to the surface it's baking from. Okay, so um, charger belt guard. I think I did that before. Um, and yeah, of course, this stupid charger valve, uh, supercharger valve uh, control thing. It's really annoying to bake because it's all such tiny parts, but they do contribute to the silhouette, and there's some nice micro details. So, uh, gotta be in there. Right, so I'm just lifting this stuff to check what I have here. P radiator. And I'm missing a few parts. Yeah, apparently. Uh, yeah, I gotta break these apart uh, so I don't have to do the exploded thing again. I can do it here, but if you don't uh, foresee this in advance, then it's much harder to move your uh, objects 
uh, your high poly and low poly objects have to move the same way that means their axes and everything have to be aligned uh, <laughs> it's a lot of trouble if, if I mean if you've attached and detached stuff all over the place so I'm just trying to avoid that and doing the separate baking thing felt that it might take longer but um, for me it's just I prefer to work like this I might change it around someday all right, so blower controls. There we go. A normal map. Set the correct save position, correct size, turn on shaded cage, and then start picking objects that need to be baked from. Right, there we go. Picking that hose and those valves do not shade the cage, do a little bit of a push just to get the cage into the uh, correct default position this one I'm going to move manually because uh, I only have to move one side so I'm not doing a push on everything just moving one set of vertices manually um, of course these have to reset and then do a smaller push on them um, reset, smaller push also why am I doing a smaller push on some parts? well because uh, the large push was to fit most of the objects but I have to go back and change it around since um, it's too too much of a, a, brute, uh, a brute push value for the cage for uh, some smaller parts Right, so baking this, uh, I don't really see any missed rays, but apparently this one had a few. Yeah, there we go. You can see that little red dot. There we go. It just disappeared. You might have not caught that, but there was a ray miss. So use the alpha to duplicate the layer to the PSD. Um, layers in there. Place and assign. I just gotta check this if it looks okay. Yeah, that looks fine. This one looks pretty good too. This part blurry, but it's really small, so who who cares? Okay, so uh, I might. Yeah, I'm gonna break these apart just to fix the smoothing group problem again. that should be just a little bit better same same deal here for the engine I want to be strict and do it correctly I might have missed a few parts um, but uh, I'm not noticing them so I'm sure that uh, viewers viewing the uh, the final image will not notice them either all right so just collapse that and yeah that's what happens when you forget to unhide the high poly get them in there again through the same method and you know the reason I'm not using a, an action for that is because um, I would always have to redo the action since I'm cloning them to a specific um, PSD file I don't always have mis normals, miscellaneous normals.psd open so I would have to remake the action every time I could do it now but yeah well whatever <laughs> Okay, so I'm just missing these small parts. I still have to bake those. And I'm going to bake the radiator at the same time. So and LP Engine Parts 02 will be, I think, the final piece that I have to bake for this, uh, this piece. After that, we're just going to have some more shader fun. Uh, and the belt, but I don't think I'm going to bake the belt. The belt's not really going to benefit from normal maps. It's just a flat piece. Okay, so this looks fine too. I'm gonna unhide all, uh, hide unselected, and then unhide the low poly layer. It's easy to work with layer hiding and um, unhiding per object independent from layers. So now I'm just hiding some stuff I don't need. I'm just hiding this stuff that that might sit in my way. Hide 
selection and we're hiding that one as well and those red valves they should also disappear okay so now we have our high pulley and low pulley for the final bake yay this is gonna be fun when it's over so the same deal all over apply a cage then do uh, the picking of objects don't forget any or you have to rebake again and do a slight push on them okay yeah so that should be fine and move those out a little bit so I don't have any problems with those bolts scale a little bit too so it fits perfectly and Add a normal map, save it, correct resolution, and fire up the render. That looks okay. Uh, I'm not pausing this one because it's fast enough. Okay, so there we go. Duplicate that back into the PSD. Let's have a look. Yup, I think that looks okay. Radiator isn't terribly interesting, but uh, that doesn't matter that much. And you see, even the small parts really have a benefit from, from baking them. I thought about not baking them when I started the project and when I was doing the low pulley and high pulley, but in the end, I ended up baking pretty much, I say, 99% of the uh, of the mesh. The parts I didn't bake are just pretty much not visible, like the connections for the fuel tank at the back. So anyway, what I'm doing now is um, I found this new shader at uh, well at the moment I was making this on Polycount. It's called the Matte Balls shader, and what it does is it mostly mimics the ZBrush effect of those fancy materials. Uh, I spent some time creating material captures for them, and uh, what it does is it's a, a view dependent lighting, but well it doesn't change uh, that much if you rotate around it. It's it's not view it's not really view dependent. It's um, normal dependent. And as you can see, it shows off the normal map pretty nice. I think it's an excellent tool for just viewing normal maps. Uh, it doesn't do anything else than ZBrush shading plus normal maps. So I'm just changing this around. Look at that. It looks like something out of Bioshock. Wow. Um, just like those old school metal illustrations, this one. Look at that. That's all a normal map on a low poly object. How amazing is that? Uh, I like this one. It looks acceptable. I'm just looking for the best one. This one's a bit strange for a mechanical object. It looks like clay. Um, and see, this one is my favorite, Tin Man. Um, I got it from the ZBrush site and converted it to uh, a JPEG, a uh, TGA I can use. No, it's a JPEG. I can use with the matte ball shader. Gold. It's also pretty cool. But I don't like the ones with noise in them because you can tell. So this Tin Man is really, really nice. Excellent for showing off uh, the... Uh, parts that just baked. I'm going to assign it to everything and then just unhide the rest of my parts. And I think I should turn the wheels black. I'll see if I do that. Look at that. Wow, that's really just the normal map makes it look like a pure high poly object. This this for me is a very rewarding moment. Um it's done a lot of work and it's just very cool to rotate around and have a look at your object. Mm, it's not so great that one. This one's a little bit over the top uh, compared to the rest. Um, Tin Man, yeah, that's the one. So, as you can see, the normal maps hold up fine, even though there might be some small issues here and there. Yeah, the glass. Uh, I'm going to create a new shader for the glass just to show it off. I'm going to use my own shader for that because Matt Balls doesn't really do glass all that well. Assign, um, lower the global opacity level, and then of course turn on Fresnel Reflection, set those to white, turn off normal map, and um, you got to turn off reflection map also, and there you go, you see now now the, uh, the lights have reflection, like glass 01, once I have that, I can yeah, what I'm doing here is um, just to duplicate, 
to get rid of uh, translucency sorting issues, then I mirror them to the other side. And look at that, that's really, really cool. I think I posted this one a few times as a work in progress image for my finished normals. Let me go change the color on the wheels. Turn on some reflection on the wheels. Not too much. I've got to make sure it's still believable. There we go. Oh wow. Anyway, that was it. Baking done.